Hello and welcome to the AQA GCSC specimen paper. This is the 8300 series and we're looking at the second paper in the foundation tier. Let's quickly run through the instructions. This is a calculator paper, there's no X on the calculator. Uh, for this paper you must have a calculator and mathematical instruments. Use black ink or black ballpoint pen, draw diagrams in pencil. If you use another colour it might not photocopy right and you could well end up not getting credited for the work that you do. Fill in the boxes at the bottom of the page. Okay, These boxes are very very important. If you don't give this information the examiners won't be able to trace who you are and you won't be credited for the work that you've done. Answer all questions. I'm going to take that one with a pinch of salt. The, you answer all the questions that you know. If you don't know the answer to a question, move on to the next question. Don't waste your time struggling over a question you can't do. Just relax, do the other questions. Maybe you'll think of the answer to it while you're working out something else and you can come back to it and answer it. But Either way, don't waste your time if you don't know the answer. You won't fail the entire course if you miss one question out. All it means is all the marks will count. You must answer questions in the questions. You must answer the questions in the spaces provided. Do not write outside the box around each page or on blank pages. Again, if it won't photocopy, you can't get marked for it. Do all rough work in this book for the same reason. In all calculations, show clearly how you work out your answer. Now, even if you get the right answer, you might not get full marks because you haven't shown you working out. And also, even if you get the wrong answer, you might still be able to get some marks if you have shown you working out. The marks for questions are shown in brackets. The maximum mark for this paper is 80. Now, 1 hour 30 minutes is 90 minutes, which gives you roughly 1 minute for each mark. So if a question's worth 2 marks, I recommend you spend 2 minutes on that question. If you do this, by the end of the paper, you should have 10 minutes left, which you can use to go back and check your work and correct any mistakes. That little bit of grace period to go back and check your work really important. You may ask for more answer paper, graph paper and tracing paper. These must be tagged securely to the answer book. If they're not tagged securely they could come loose, they could get separated, the examiner won't know who you are, you won't get credited for the work that you've done. That being said, let's have a look at some of these quick um, one mark questions. Question 1 reads which of these numbers is one more than a multiple of five circle your answer okay well multiples of five will end in a five or a zero so if it's one more than a multiple of five it's going to end in a six or a one so the answer we're looking for is 26 which of these numbers has exactly three factors circle your answer well, a prime number will always have exactly two factors, which is itself and one. So we know that three and five are out because they're prime numbers. Six has four factors. We've got one times six and six times one. Uh, we've also got two times three and three times two. So the factors of six are one, two, three, and six, which are four factors. Now, four the factors are 1 times 2, 2 times 1, and 2 times 2. So the factors of 4 are 1, 2, and 4. So the one that has exactly three factors is 4. Question 3. Which of these numbers is 6 less than negative 1.4? Circle your answer. Well, we're starting with a negative number, and we're taking away 6. So the answer is going to be even more negative. So the answer is going to be negative 7.4. So this is the answer we're looking for. 
by the way this is a calculator paper so if you wanted to you could just type in negative 1.4 and subtract 6 question 4 which shape is congruent to shape X circle the correct letter okay, so we've got an upside down F shape with a bit of a tail well this doesn't have a tail it's got this bulge sort of in the middle this is an F shape with the bulge opposite the lower bulge <laughs> I don't know what to call them other than bulge okay this is like a C shape with a bit of a bump and this is an F shape with a tail so a congruent shape is the exact same shape but it might be rotated it's the same size and the same shape but it can be any orientation it can be any kind of rotation you like and this is the same shape rotated so the answer is D and question 5 is worth 2 marks so we'll look at that in the next video hope that was helpful and I'll see you in the next video